there viewers and welcome back to the self made auto channel that's our 2004 chevrolet it's a trailblazer it has the big 4-2 in it the cooling fan has gone wonky on it and it throws a code for it i do not know the code number because the codes were cleared uh, a customer told me about it i did look at it and see that the fan uh, it has a electro hydraulic viscous coupler on it uh, basically mechanical fan screwed to the front of the engine uh, I can't explain it well, but I did print out the theory and operation, so we will read it together. I'll throw it up on the screen for you. Uh, basically, the ECM controls the fan speed. Uh, in this car, it cannot. Uh, when we look at scan data, we'll see the actual versus desired, and we also have some bi-directional controls where we can turn it on, turn it off, and all that stuff, and we'll see that none of that works, and it, and it just is defaulted to a full-on position, if you will. So what I've done, because we have to be able to test it, is first of all, I've got us a wiring diagram here. And looking at the diagram, uh, I'll see if I can, I, you know, I'll pull it up on your screen for you. Uh, in the bottom left there, we show the cooling fan. And then uh, we see it has five wires. We have uh, a Hall effect sensor on it. So it's going to be a regular three wire signal, you know, sensor type of some sort here. We've got a five volt reference. We have a, a low reference or sensor ground. And then we have the signal coming out of it, which I assume is going to be a five volt square wave, the faster it goes, you know, the higher the frequency, um, you know, of our sensor there. And then it looks like we have a full time ground and then a power supply that comes from a fan relay that is controlled by the PCM. Going into uh, my train of thought here, we'll look at, I'll pop up there for you the theory and operation of it because this is important to know because we can't test it unless we know how it works. Uh, let's see. And they write, PCM controls the electro viscous fan clutch engagement. PCM regulates a 12 volt pulse width modulated signal to the cooling fan relay. Uh, the PWM signal determines the on time of the relay. As the command say the fan clutch increases, so does the on time of the relay. So essentially, ECM is going to take some inputs from various sensors, uh, coolant temp, AC pressure, vehicle speed, training fluid, ambient temp, and then it's going to control the fan speed by providing it with a pulse width modulated signal. Uh, that's what I read so far. Uh, let's see, when the solenoid in the fan clutch is energized, it opens a spring-loaded valve and allows fluid to flow from the storage chamber to the fluid coupling of the cooling fan, increasing the fan speed. When the solenoid is de-energized, the spring-loaded valve closes, blocks the path of fluid, and the fluid coupling of the fan clutch reduces the fan speed. Uh, let's see. The fan has the ability to create a feedback signal, so the PCM knows the actual speed input, so that way there, once the ECM is saying, hey, turn on, it can receive the signal back from that three-wire, that five-volt sensor that's in the viscous coupler, sends it back to the ECM and the ECM says, hey, you know, I'm telling you to go this fast, you're going this fast, you're listening, we're good, everybody's happy. Uh, the, hall effect, the hall effect sensor returns a signal pulse through the cooling fan. Signal circuit in response to the reluctor track passing by the magnetic field of the hall sensor. PCM commands the cooling fan to 100% under the following conditions. So this is where the PCM's going to say we need full beans, we're code red. Coolant temp exceeds 264 degrees. Training temp exceeds 304 degrees. AC pressure exceeds 240 PSI, or when certain DTCs are set. Uh, let's see. The scan tool can engage the cooling fan clutch. This is done when the engine control special function menu screen, the engine cooling fan, it can take up to two minutes for a 100% command with the engine at 2,000 RPMs. Um, it can take up to, let's see, to disengage, it can take up to two minutes at 2,000 RPMs. Uh, so we'll have to keep that in mind. When we're fiddling with our bi-directional controls, we have to be able to maintain, you know, 2,000 RPMs for an extended period of time to see if it's actually responding. So that's good to know. I did not know that. Uh, let's see. In lower ambient temperatures, the cooling fan will engage in less time. However, it will take longer to disengage uh, do the properties of the fluid versus temperature. So uh, it sounds like if it's cold, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a delayed response for all the viscous fluid to do what viscous fluid does. So all I'm concerned about before we make the call on the fan, is it receiving its appropriate signal from the ECM to turn on and off? Connector is easy to get to. It's right here in the front of the vehicle. Now we have a basic understanding of how it works. We're armed with a wire diagram. 
we can come up with some tests. And I think the only things that we need to monitor, uh, first we'll check the ground. Is the ground on the cooling fan good? If it is, uh, great. Then what we can do is look at the signal coming out of the fan uh, with a scope. And we can look at the uh, pulse width modulated signal going to the fan with a scope because if our ground is good and our signals going out is good We don't we're not really concerned about the 5 volt. We're not concerned about the sensor ground uh, Because if we we're missing here those two we're not going to have a signal wire uh, Which I assume is good because when I looked at scan data originally it did have a fan speed output so uh, So we'll have to we can skip those things. So let's get started So looking at the diagram here it should be pin a it should be a black wire next to the white wire so we will unplug the fan. Now this fan shroud is busted to pieces. I don't know who did what. Uh, a little bit of plate in the viscous coupler bearing. Not horrid. So we will unplug it. If I can. Maybe I can't. There. That is unplugged. That is the black wire next to the white wire. We're going to load that sucker. We got a 4 amper right here. The ground. I don't know if we're going to be able to reach the power. We'll give it a try. I'm going to very gingerly front probe it and see if we can hit the power over here. Come on, power. Got some sparks flying. There we go. Nice and bright. Light's a 4 amp test light. So that's good. I know our power is good. No sense in, or our ground is good. No sense in checking the power because um, that's only going to be on with the relay. We're going to do is we're going to check it with the load in place here, the original load. Now we could take our test light and go power to ground and then we could use our scan tool and command it on. That is something we could do. Let me get our scan tool fired up. We can do that just in case uh, you're curious about that. Obviously that does make a difference, uh, taking inputs from engine RPM and stuff, but we know that we have signal being received, so now we'll just check the speed sensor output. I get sidetracked so easy. <laughs> Anyhow, I got the truck running. Uh, I got it pretty well warmed up. Uh, I'm trying to remember where we left off. Oh, we did the uh, light test out there, and we see that the command wasn't really as we thought it would be. Uh, evidently using the scan tool and bi-directional controls when we commanded that on even though we went to 100% it was still looking for other various inputs before it you know set it at 100% so that's good to know uh, what I did now is we've got the scan tool up there we can see desired speed versus actual and we can see they don't match and I'm going to take and bring the RPMs up here and what are we at here desired fan speed is still around 300 RPMs 400 and it's creeping up there, but we can see the actual fan speed is much higher. Okay, that's where we're at now, just so I can see. It's trying to regulate it. Now I can sit here and hold this for several minutes at, you know, 2000 RPMs. And uh, it, it'll stay right where it's at. And the fan speed always stays bouncing between, you know, 1600 and 2000 RPMs. 
and I, I believe the reason it's calling for more and less fan there from 300 to 400, I think it's because I have the AC on. Let me shut that off. And let's just see if that stays steady now around 300 RPMs. Yeah, so that was toggling because I had the uh, AC on. So, all right, so there's that. Now I'm going to show you the problem with it here. So I've got our little bandage here hooked up. Let me see if I can pull in some more wire here. Jason's out there working, so it's. Let's see if I can get some more wire without getting them tangled up in the fan. There we go. So our green trace is the actual speed signal coming off from that fan which appears to be working good. Let me zoom in on this. Now I just hooked this to the uh, blue wire. So let's, oh, I'm sorry, let's change our time basis here so we get a little more time on the screen. Uh, it's hooked to the blue wire. So that's the green trace. That is the one uh, zero to five volt square wave uh, that's coming back from the ECM. Now when we give that some RPM here, our frequency of that wave should increase which it does, but then all of a sudden we're gonna to get to a point, I think, where this whole thing starts breaking down. And that's right about there. So that is about 2,500 engine RPMs, and you can see the speed sensor, the Hall effect sensor in there is going kaput. And a lot of big open holes, but then we let her back to an idle, and it works fine. So uh, the speed sensor portion of this sensor is, is bad. You know, the Hall effect part of it is, is junk, so we need it. You know, just as a result of that, you know, that tells us right there, you know, we can make the call. Viscous fan clutch is junk. We want to make sure it's still receiving the input. Of course, the actual fan speed versus the desired is, is higher, so it's not sending any 12 volt signal to this thing to, you know, to turn on. Uh, that's going to be our yellow trace right here, but I'm going to use the scan tool. And we're going to crank this back up to 100, and we should see we sh should start seeing an input there, I'm thinking. Let me hold it up here to higher RPM. Right now it's commanding it at 1700 RPMs, 2000, but it's actually, there we go, now we're starting to see it. So we can see that coming across the screen. Let me put a lot of time on the screen here. So there, now we see that the PCM has control of it. It's trying to control it. Uh, right now it's commanding the fan at 2,900 RPMs, but the fan is only running at 2,000. And let's see here, let me get our engine RPMs up. So we can see that command. That duty cycle starting to increase. The desired fan speed right now is 3,500, but it's only at 3,000. And we can see that the ECM has control of it, but with the speed signal being messed up, there's nothing it can really do. So let me let me start decreasing it. And you can hear the change in the fan speed, even though the actual fan speed right now is reporting at 4,000 RPMs. So then I can crank it back up. We should hear it start to come on. We should see it start to turn on here. that speed sensor messed up it gets it all kind of wonky I'm holding the RPMs about 3,000 and it's gonna start coming on here because the fan speed is reading incorrectly it doesn't really know what to do should start increasing yep so we hear it increasing out there under the hood so the ECM has control of it, the viscous fan coupler seems to work, but the fact that the speed sensor is messed up is why we're gonna make the call on this that it's junk. So I'll turn it back down, and we'll see the command goes away. And that, folks, is that. So looking at everything, ECM has control, we've got power, we've got ground, but we also have a speed sensor that has done gone haywire on us. It's good till about, yeah, I can't see what you guys can see, but right about there it starts breaking down. So that's about 2,500 inch in RPMs. I let her idle, she goes back to normal. So that's that, folks. 
So we'll leave it at that. I'm going to get going. Why don't you guys go on down there to that comment box, leave a question, comment, criticism, or concern. While you're down there, subscribe, ring the bell, all that business. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. <coughs> Thanks for watching.